Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you a simple task in DaVinci Resolve. It is tracking footage, and I'm going to show you the easy way to do it, and I'm going to show you the little bit more advanced way to do it, because the built-in stability tracker does not always do its job, so I'll show you another way to do that right now. Okay, I'm going to start with the simple method of tracking and getting stability of a shot. So yeah, this is a close-up shot of a caterpillar on a flower, and so it's handheld, and so it's going to bounce around a little bit, and this would be a good footage piece to test this out. So let's go back here to the start. So make sure the clip is selected, and the inspector window is open in the top right here, and we're gonna scroll down to stability, and make sure the stability switch is turned on. If it's red, it's on, and then double left click on the stabilization text here and you're gonna get some settings down here. And so what we wanna look at, there's three modes here, perspective, similarity, and translation, and they're all a little bit different. So in perspective, it's kind of the mid-grade stabilization method we're gonna use. Uh, it's gonna use pan, tilt, zoom, and rotation analysis to take a look at your clip to try to provide stabilization for you. Uh, similarity, if you're getting a kind of a tough track, uh, this is kind of the Cadillac, so it is a pan, tilt, zoom, rotation, and stabilization. It uses some math to kind of smooth that out. And then the translation is the most simple. It's basically just going to look at pan and tilt, so it's just X and Y. Uh, it'll be the fastest track, but for us, this is a really simple shot here. I'm just going to use the mid-grade, which is perspective. And looking at these settings below, if we if we select this setting this is the camera lock so this is going to give us like a tripod uh, shot it's going to try to lock the camera in at all costs and this zoom is going to kind of eliminate the kind of the blocking around the edges so if you select it it's going to automatically zoom to a level where you're not going to see the black around the edges of the frame uh, the cropping ratio smooth and strength and I'll show you if I select the camera lock I'm gonna gray out those settings so I can't do anything if I turn that off I can make manual adjustments and I'll just go over these settings quickly with you so the cropping ratio if we provide a one which is the highest level it's not gonna stabilize at all it's gonna do nothing and so the lower level I get it's going to provide more and a more aggressive stabilization to the footage. Smoothness is mathematical smoothing. And so again, if we want to turn this up to a larger number, it's going to get more of a smoothness. So lower settings down here, you're not going to get any or very little smoothing at all. And so if you want to provide more smoothing, turn it up to one. Under strength, um, the higher the number, the more aggressive the stabilization applied. So if we want to get less stabilization, more of a natural feel, or what the, the handheld looks like, a little bit of the remnant of that shot, you can just lower that strength down a little bit. But for this shot, we're going to use a simple method. I'm going to lock it in as far as the camera lock and let it do its thing. So once we set that, just hit the stabilize, it's going to go through. It just takes a few seconds. Uh, and this computer is moderately fast. It's got about 48 gigs of RAM, so it got that done pretty fast for you. So now we have that track done. You took a look at that. If we turn off the zoom, you can see what happens here. So we're gonna get that black edge around the sides there. So turning it on just gets us zoomed back in and it gives us that nice track there. So we can see that that shot looks pretty good. It is locked in really nicely. That's a good track. So if you want to turn off the, the track that you produce, just turn this stabilization off and it'll go back to the original track without the stabilization applied. So very, very simple to do. So that's a really easy way to do it. So let's go ahead and get into the more advanced method. And go to this second uh, clip, just pull another one over there. Go ahead and select it and hit the Fusion button. Okay, in Fusion, we're just going to add a Transform node. So make sure this Media In is selected and drag this Transform down. 
and just drag it on to the node structure here. If you don't have these buttons in there, you can just hit shift space and type in transform and you can drag that and drop it in, add it in. Uh, I don't need to do that. So I have this transform there. And what we want to focus in on is the center point because that's going to set the center of the frame. Just go up here to the settings and right click on center and we're going to say modify with a tracker steady position right there. And so it didn't really look like it did anything, but it added this little tracker here. So make sure you go over to the modifier tab up here and there's the settings for the tracker. And so to drag this over, we're just going to drag this upper right corner. And we want to go in on one of these little white circles. That'll be enough difference for us. I'm just going to zoom in here so I can see what I'm doing. Go about in the center of this circle here. And I'm going to actually widen that up a little bit, the pattern height, just a bit. And so we can do the width here, the height here. And then the search width is kind of that outer box. You can see that dash line. So if you want to raise that up a little bit, I just got a little bit wider there. And what I want to do now is it defaults to the luminance. And I think that's a really good setting. Um, you know, if we look at the black and white, that has a lot of contrast. The luminance works really good. If you want to select a different track of a different, if you want to just go on the blues or greens or reds, you just click these buttons here. Um, and this is the alpha. We don't really have an alpha here, so it's just going to be white. You're not going to get a good track from that. So I'm going to go on the luminance and then make sure again it's at the start of the track here. Whoops, I got to move that back down. And we want to go, we can change it to frames per point. I want to make it as smooth as possible. So I'm going to go one frame per point. You can go less. It'll be a quicker track, but it'll have less points in there. So it'll kind of jump around. And adaptive mode, I want to do none in this case. Um, we can do every frame or best, best match but I'm just gonna do a simple track here. We can go pattern center or we can do an append. And that'd be if we're going back over a section of this track here. So to track through the whole um, track or the whole clip here, we just wanna hit this track forward. And it's gonna zoom through this thing. You can see it's getting a nice track there. I'll let that take a few seconds and go through and I'll be right back with you. Yeah, so this is just a moderate computer here and that took 42 seconds. So if you have something blazing fast, it will be a lot faster than that. Uh, I do have 48 gigs of RAM here, so if you have less RAM, it might take a little bit longer for you. So the next thing that we want to do is it has the track done. So if we look at this, I'll kind of zoom out. You can see what it's doing. Let me go to just one screen here. I'll pull this down to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so you can see as it goes through it's just moving the frame around so that center point is being affected by the modifier there with this track there. So it's trying to keep that center point in the middle but adjusting it based on this track. So it kind of does that automatically by adding that modifier in there. But you can see we're gonna lose footage off the edges of this, this screen here. So what we need to do now is, we'll go back to the edit page to do this. We're just gonna do a zoom here so make sure the track is selected here and we can zoom into the footage however you want it to be. Um, you just have to make sure you have enough footage in there to so you don't get the black lines around the edges. So we, we lost a little bit there. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more. Okay, let's take a look at this with our zoom in there, 1.39 in my case. And that's pretty good. So you can see a little bit of a difference. It is kind of doing a little bit of bouncing around. Um, the built-in stability tracker is, is really locked in for this shot. And it's doing a really nice job on this Caterpillar. This one's bouncing around a little bit more because that's what's really happening in the shot. Because this flower, uh, these elements are moving kind of with the wind a little bit. And so it's letting that natural movement happen a little bit. So... Uh, there's the difference there. And the other thing is, if we use this built-in stability tracker, um, sometimes we can't get a very good track at all. Uh, it, it's kind of a can thing. You can do some setting changes on smoothing it and the cropping ratio. 
So there's a comparison of the easy method and the more advanced method of tracking and stabilizing your camera in a kind of a shaky camera shot or a handheld shot. This is the free version that I'm doing this tutorial on. So anybody that has Resolve should have access to this right away. It's a really simple way to improve your footage if you have some shaky footage that you want to improve and this will do the job. So thanks for watching today. I appreciate you guys taking a look at it. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below and I'll get back to you on answers. So hopefully everybody's staying creative out there and everybody take care, please.